South Bank University. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the inaugural lecture of Professor Perry Shaw. I am particularly keen to welcome you all because it's the first in our inaugural lecture series this academic year. The presentation of an inaugural lecture is really a significant milestone in the academic career of a full professor. The inaugural lecture provides an opportunity to present their career so far, update colleagues on the current and future plans, and introduce their field of expertise to wider audiences. For the schools where the professors are based, the event is a chance to recognize their achievement, host a celebratory event, and I'm hoping that many of you will join us through that door afterwards for a celebratory drink uh, at the end of the lecture. And it's an opportunity to bring the staff and students together, an opportunity to engage with broader audience inside and outside the university. Hopefully establish new collaborations, strengthen existing collaborations, and catch up with some of the alumni. For the university, inaugural lectures present an essential component of the public event program. It is an opportunity for us to engage the general public, creating a wider awareness of the benefit of universities teaching education and research and enterprise. So allow me to introduce Professor Shah. Professor Shah obtained his BEng degree in optoelectronics and his master's in solid state physics, both from Jilin University of Technology in China. He then saw light and joined London South <laughs> University to do his PhD in photophysics with us. He is a fellow of the Institution of Engineering and Technology and a senior fellow of Higher Education Academy. His main research interest is to develop novel infrared and electronic sensing technologies for skin measurements and industrial non-destructive testing. He's also a director and co-founder of BioSystem Limited, a university spin-out which designs and manufactures skin measurement instruments. Apart from his research, Professor Xiao also teaches at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels and has taught on more than 25 different modules, has set up three new courses in the past, and is now the course director for Masters of Research in General Engineering. Please join me in welcoming him to deliver his inaugural address. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, uh, it is a great pleasure to be here to give this uh, lecture and uh, uh, this lecture will focus on my uh, main research interest on the infrared measurement and uh, electronic measurement for, s for skin applications. So uh, just a quick uh, uh, introduce myself, I got my uh, BN uh, in optoelectronics, MSc in solid state physics and a PhD in physics and uh, uh, Tara has introduced uh, uh, most of them, so I, can, I think I can skip these, um, uh, these uh, slides. And uh, I will start with my uh, uh, early childhood to, to show uh, a bit of my journey. I was born uh, in Changchun in the northeast of China, 
but I was growing up in Sichuan, uh, in Leshan, uh, in that area. So it's about uh, 6,000 miles away from London. And uh, if you haven't been to Sichuan before, <laughs> <laughs> Sichuan is very famous for its uh, hot and spicy uh, and mouth-numbing uh, dishes. Yeah, they, 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 they like to use these uh, red, hot, dry uh, chilies. And uh, if you want to uh, experience the, uh, the Sichuan cuisine, there is a Haidi Lao restaurant in London, one, one in uh, uh, Piccadilly Circus, I think one in uh, O2. And uh, it's a hot pot, so you have a, a, a spicy and not spicy uh, soup, and then you just dip uh, uh, vegetables and meat into the soup. Uh, the interesting part of this restaurant is uh, it has robot waiters. So when you order something, the robot will bring it uh, to you. And, uh, and uh, when you uh, order the noodles, the, the waiter will come over uh, to do a little bit of a show, something like this. So if you... <laughs> He can stretch it. <laughs> then it will just uh, uh, break it into pieces and put it uh, in, in your soup. And also during the, the dinner time, uh, there's, a, there's a, a show. This is a Sichuan face changing show. It will be something like this. <laughs> I think that's the idea. It's, it's quite, a, quite a entertaining uh, in that uh, restaurant. Uh, so we can, yeah. And uh, Le Shan is a small town. It's uh, uh, very famous for its uh, giant Buddha. This, is bu this Buddha is carved on the side of the, of the cliff, of the mountain, and then they, ha they have a three rivers mixed in front of it. And you can see the size of the, uh, of the Buddha compared with the, the tourists over there. And, uh, and this picture went uh, viral, uh, in, uh, I think it was uh, two years ago, when there's a big flood, and you can see the, the water uh, uh, merge up to the, to the foot uh, of, the, of the Buddha. And then, uh, uh, after I uh, finished the uh, primary school, I moved back to Changchun, my hometown, uh, where I was born. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's called the Changchun, in the northeast of, uh, of China, near, uh, near the, uh, the, uh, the Russia border and the, and the North Korea. And uh, Changchun is a is a is a very it's quite a green city with a lot of trees and uh, and the parks, a bit like uh, London. And uh, Changchun in Chinese means uh, Chang means uh, forever, and the Chun means uh, spring. So it's a uh, forever spring. Uh, but ironically, if you live there, you find that half of the year is actually winter, <laughs> and uh, and uh, the winter can go as uh, as cold as minus thirty. 30 degrees. So Changchun is very famous for all these uh, winter uh, uh, sightseeing, uh, ice sculptures, and, uh, and uh, sports, etc. And one of the coolest uh, things you can do at minus 30 degrees is you take a mug of uh, boiling hot water and go outside and you spray it in the, in the sky. And the, the water vapor will instantaneously frozen to ice in the middle of the air. So this is uh, how it looks like. 陈斌的现象那它的原理是怎么样形成的呢当然气温越低越好而且空气要比较干燥第二是水温最好是高于 90度的热水 It's a very uh, uh, 
spectacular uh, thing you can, you can do. And uh, 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 Changchun, apart from its coldness, is also the city where uh, there's a, the, the first car manufacturer group, uh, the first uh, passenger train <laughs> company, and they also man. You know, China is very famous for the high speed bullet train, and about 50% of the train was actually manufactured in Changchun. And uh, Changchun also have the first uh, movie uh, makers, and also have 27 universities. Uh, and uh, with the uh, Jilin University is the, the, the largest, w one of the largest in the uh, in the country, and uh, it, uh, it merged with five other universities and has uh, more than 60,000 uh, uh, students. And uh, so after the my secondary school, I moved to, I went to university to study uh, engineering degrees. So this is the, the university, one of the, the largest uh, uh, university uh, in China. And uh, after my uh, bachelor degrees and uh, and uh, and MSc degrees. I decided to come to UK to to study for my PhD. The the starting point was at uh, Strathclyde University in Glasgow. And uh, if you haven't been to Glasgow, uh, <laughs> Glasgow is the greatest city in Europe. Uh, and you must try uh, deep fried Mars bars and. Uh, I am brew. <laughs> it's one of the best. <laughs> and uh, uh, after uh, 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 after one year in Stress Clyde, my supervisor moved to London South Bank University, so I have no choice but to move here. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> this is a. Uh, 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 where I finished my PhD, and uh, after PhD, I did my, uh, my postdoc, and then become a lecturer. And then uh, uh, we moved to the, uh, the research and uh, uh, enterprise activities. So currently, I'm at the Bioengineering Research Center, and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, 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 research works mainly focus on the measurement. So uh, in this uh, talk, we're going to fo focus on three key technologies uh, I've been working on. That's uh, aqua flux for the uh, skin water loss measurement and the epsilon for the uh, uh, dielectric constant measurement or skin water content measurement. And also the, uh, the optothermal, the, it's an infrared technology for, for also for the skin measurement. Okay, so uh, of all of these uh, three technologies, the first two technologies, Aquaflux and the Ypsilon, has been uh, now commercialized uh, uh, through our university spin-out company, uh, Biosystem Lim Limited. So these uh, two uh, technologies uh, we are absolutely proud of because they all started as a uni uh, uh, university student project. The Aquaflux was started as a BEND project and finished with a PhD project and the MSc project. And the Ypsilon was started as a two PhD project and finished by uh, several other PhD project. And uh, uh, a bit of a, uh, history, how we started the Biosystem uh, Limited company. Uh, it's all started uh, in the uh, Unilever trial. So we, we, we did a study with the Unilever and in, in, uh, in the study, one of the measurement was uh, 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 so-called transepidermal water loss measurement, TEWL. So this is uh, the, 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 uh, the skin water loss measurement. So we know that uh, human body uh, is wet inside, has a lot of water, and outside is very dry. So the, the water inside our body will diffuse gradually through the skin to the environment. So you, if you can visualize your, your skin, you will see there's a constant water coming out of, come, come, come out of your skin. So by measuring this water loss of the skin, you can understand the skin uh, barrier function. If you have a good skin, good barrier, you should have very low water loss. And if you have a, a damaged skin, diseased skin, you have a, a damaged barrier function and therefore you have high water loss. So by measuring the water loss, we can uh, access, assess the uh, 
the skin health. Yeah. So, so that's one of the key measurement for many, many uh, clinical studies. So uh, if, if you find this uh, TEWL, uh, uh, two uh, uh, diff acronym, different, difficult to, to remember, you can remember it as uh, two elephant uh, wearing leotard. Uh, at that time, we are doing the two measurement to use a German uh, company's uh, device. So uh, you can see it's an open chamber device which has a two humidity and the temperature sensor in the middle. So it basically measures the, the, the vapor gradient uh, above your skin. And from that gradient, you can work out uh, the flux. But the, the trouble of this open uh, chamber approach is, uh, is uh, terribly uh, inaccurate and uh, is, is suspect uh, subject to the to the external uh, environment. So we ended up we have to find a small room, closed small room. We have to seal the air conditions in order to do the measurement. And uh, you, you can't open the doors during the measurement. And even during the measurement, you can't look at it because uh, the the. Uh, the, the air you're breathing out will affect the measurement. So we were doing the measurement like this. Uh, so we thought uh, there must be a better way of doing this measurement. So the initial idea is uh, we have to seal it. We have to seal the, the chamber, make it a closed chamber. Then the problem is uh, when you seal the chamber, the, the water vapor went into the chamber will, will, will become saturated. So we need uh, some mechanism to, to deal with it. And at that time, we have a, a wonderful Irish student did a beyond project on Peltier modules. So, the, so, so that's the uh, Peltier module. It's a wonderful material. If you apply the, the voltage to the, to the Peltier, it will cool on one side, it will heat on the other side. And if you reverse the, the, uh, the voltage, it will heat on this side and cool on the other side. So it's a very uh, amazing uh, student project. Then we thought, ah, we can seal the, the measurement chamber and put this uh, Peltier cooler on the top and, that, and, the freeze, and we freeze it to the minus uh, degrees. So that will freeze all the, uh, the extra vapor in the, uh, uh, in the chamber and that will create a steady, repeatable measurement uh, 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 environment. And then we, based on that concept, we got the, the patent. And then uh, we had uh, uh, this wonderful Irish student who did, uh, the, did the PhD work, make uh, the prototype, and it's all working. Then we thought, good, let's uh, license it out. And uh, then we can all relax and the counting money coming in. Uh, that uh, didn't happen. Uh, we, we, we have contacted almost all the uh, skin manufacturer companies uh, in, the, in the Europe, and uh, nobody wants to take, uh, take this up because uh, they think it's high risk. Anything, when you talk to, this, this is one of the lessons we learned. When you talk about uh, business, you, you talk about the investors. If something doesn't exist on the market, it's a risk, and it's a risk that uh, they don't want to, uh, to take. So we thought it's a very good idea, and we are willing to take it. If nobody else wants to do it, we, we, we want to do it ourselves. So, so that's how we formed the company. So Biox is actually the initials of four of our uh, 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 researchers. So uh, Bob Imhoff is, uh, is a supervisor at that stage, and both uh, uh, Elliot Berg, Donald G. School, and me was uh, Bob's uh, PhD student. And that's how we get the, uh, the company started. So now uh, we have uh, two measurement, uh, skin measurement instrument. So that's the aqua flux and the epsilon. So the first one is aqua flux. So the aqua flux uh, is based on this key uh, patented uh, measurement chamber. It's a closed chamber. We have a condenser on the top, uh, cool down to minus seven degrees. And we have uh, uh, a wasted chamber and uh, inside the chamber, we have, uh, uh, we have a temperature and humidity sensor. So this patented uh, design can maximize the, uh, the stability and the repeatability of the, uh, of the measurement. So the wasted chamber helps the, the vapor flow much more steady. And also, we decide to put the sensor on, on, the, on the wall rather than stick in the middle. And we find that that's... Uh, uh, 
A is much safer, less damage to the sensor, and B is also stabilized, uh, slow down the, uh, the variations. So as a result, uh, our instrument is more, uh, uh, has a better signal noise ratio and more repeatable and more accurate than our competitors. So, so th this is a very simple chart. Uh, the blue curves are our data. So it's a, it's a raw data. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the red one and uh, the black one are the our competitors' data. And you can see how noisy they are. And, uh, and uh, of course, that noise will bring up the measurement errors. And uh, this is a uh, repeatability uh, uh, study with uh, one of uh, uh, our competitors. So, so basically, you just um, measure the same skin side and you repeatedly, and then you average them together. So the more spread the measurement means more variable your, your instrument, and the, and the more focused means uh, your value is more repeatable. So you can, you can see our blue uh, data has uh, uh, about less than 1% one, 1 of uh, uh, this uh, called the CV uh, coefficient of variation, uh, and our competitor has more than 10%. So that's, uh, 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 that shows how repeatable of our measurement is. And uh, this uh, rep uh, uh, re repeatability is very important because the skin is a highly variable uh, sample, and, uh, and the measurement result uh, is always the, the sum of the skin variability and the instrument uh, uh, variability. So by reducing the instrument variability, then that makes the measurement <coughs> result more reflect on the skin rather than reflect on the instrument. And the second instrument is uh, epsilon permittivity imaging. It's called epsilon because it's basically it's a capacitor uh, measurement. We measure the dielectric constant. So this is a uh, uh, what it looks like. So basically you have, a, you have a two uh, metal plate in the cap capacitor and then you have an electric field goes from positive uh, uh, voltage to negative voltage. And what you do is you just open up the capacitor and then the, cap the electric field will go from, uh, again, uh, from, from the uh, a positive voltage to negative voltage. But, the, but the now, it becomes a fringing, we call it a fringing field. And then when you measure the, the capacitance of this capacitor, it depends, depends on the, the media you put in between the two metal plates. And uh, if, you, if you put the skin on the top, then it measures the, the dielectric constant of skin. And in skin, uh, the water is main contributor to the dielectric constant. The higher the water content, the higher dielectric constant, and the lower the water content, the lower dielectric constant. And therefore, by measuring the water, con uh, the skin dielectric constant, we basically measure the water content in skin. And uh, you can calibrate it and make, and make, make it a, 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 a skin water uh, measurement instrument. And uh, this is uh, a few uh, uh, typical uh, image, measurement image looks like. So the beauty of this uh, uh, technique is uh, imaging based, so it's not uh, ju just measure the, the water content in skin, it also give you a distribution. So you can see at the different skin side, you have a different uh, 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 patterns. And uh, we use the color, the brightness, uh, not color, the brightness to represent uh, the dielectric constant. So the brighter the image, the higher the water content, uh, the dielectric constant, <coughs> and the higher the water content, uh, and uh, the darker the image, the, 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 the lower the uh, dielectric constant. And you can see at the wrist and the palm, you can see a lot of hot spots. So that's where the sweat gland activity is. is. And if you, if you look carefully, those uh, black uh, uh, spots in the middle of these uh, bright spots, they are the sweat glands. So we can use this uh, uh, device to image the sweating glands of, uh, of the skin and uh, to see the sweat, sweat gland activity. And we have a little video here to show how we can see the sweating activity. And you can see this is a, the sweat is come out of your skin. So, so you can you can visualize uh, this uh, sweating activity. Hmm? And this is a. Uh, Another example uh, uh, of the uh, uh, epsilon images. So this is uh, uh, 
uh, during the tape stripping. So what you do is you use a sellotape to apply to the skin and then you remove the skin top layers, layer by layer. And you can see as you're stripping the skin down, the, the, the brightness of the image is getting uh, brighter and brighter. So that's indicated the skin is dry outside and wet inside. So as, you, as soon as you remove the outer layers, the you will see the wet inside uh, uh, of, the, of the skin. And, uh, and because we base on the dielectric constant measurement, not only we can measure water, we can also me measure chemicals, because chemicals, they all have a, a higher dielectric constant. So, for example, we have uh, uh, did an experiment on ethanol, and the ethylene glycol, and the glycerol. So you can, uh, so these are, uh, are examples to show uh, we can measure the chemical penetration to skin. And you can see different chemicals, uh, they pen they penetrate through skin differently. And uh, this is uh, very important, for example, when you, when you study uh, uh, this uh, transepidermal uh, drug delivery, for example, uh, uh, and, the per and, and other cosmetic product. And uh, 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 this is a, a, a very interesting result of the, of the soaps. So we, we did a study uh, on six different type of soaps, so we are not allowed to show the um, uh, the, the name of the soaps. But uh, we have a, basically we have a six different type of soaps. So we use a soap to wash the uh, the, the forearms uh, uh, several times a day and five days a week. And we want to see how the soap affect the skin. And it, uh, if you can see from day one to day five, it's getting darker and darker. So that means that there's a drying effect during this, uh, this, uh, this wash. So, 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 so the conclusion is uh, don't overwash your, your hands. <laughs> uh, and you, and if, you, if you compare different soap carefully, you probably will see the, the soap 2 and the soap 5 is less darker. Yeah? So these are the, the two very popular brands. That, uh, that has more moisture content in it and damage less uh, on, on, your, on your skin. And uh, ah, this is the, the, the measurement on the suntan lotion. So we, we, we want to see if we can see the differences of different, uh, different uh, suntan lotions. So we have a same, same type of suntan lotion, but uh, with a different, uh, these uh, uh, SPF sun, uh, protection factors. Uh, so if one is 20, 30, 50, and the control is, uh, is just a uh, skin side without applying anything. And uh, as we can see, after we applied the center lotion, skin changes, become much more brighter, and after two hours, it's getting less. And we can see the difference of the different uh, the, uh, the suntan lotions. So uh, that's a uh, 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 very interesting result shows that uh, we can use this technique to study the effect of a different uh, product, different cosmetic product on skin. So uh, as, 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 a, as a quick summary with aquaflux and the Ypsilon, you can study the skin barrier function, whether it's uh, intact or damaged, uh, or the skin hydration, whether it's normal or dry skin, uh, skin health, whether it's normal skin or the diseased skin, and uh, it can also work on hair and the nails. And these two instruments has now been used in more than 200 organizations uh, uh, in the world. And we can see there's uh, universities, there's uh, hospitals, and, uh, and a lot of other uh, 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 cosmetic companies, and including the big names, all the big, almost all the big names, uh, Unilever, P&G, Gillette, uh, L'Oreal, and, uh, uh, and so on, and the Pfizer. Uh, we, uh, we, are very, uh, we are very proud that uh, uh, our product, our uh, technology, you know, that was, uh, that was developed at this, this university that can find their usage in all these, uh, uh, all these uh, big, big uh, uh, companies. And uh, at one stage, uh, Johnson Johnson even think of uh, standardize all their uh, skin water loss measurement on our instrument. But uh, uh, 
that didn't happen. But, but if that could happen, we could be, we could have sold even more uh, to the uh, uh, to the market. Okay, so next I want to uh, move on to the uh, the infrared technology we've been working on. We have uh, uh, developed uh, a technology called the optothermal transient emission radiometry, or in short, it's otter, uh, like the furry animal. Uh, so in this uh, technology, we basically use a pulse laser to heat uh, the sample, and uh, the sample absorb the, the, the laser energy and will have a temp temperature increase. And this temperature increase will cause black body radiation increase. And then we can use a, a, a fast infrared detector to pick up this uh, increase in the uh, uh, infrared radiation. And by looking at the measurement signal, we can analyze samples' optical properties, thermal properties, and, uh, and its layer structure. And uh, uh, for the skin measurement, uh, we can use two types of lasers. So for example, if we use an erbium yak laser, which has a 2.94 micrometer wavelength, these wavelengths, if you look at the, the, the mid-infrared spectru uh, spectrum, you find it's heavily absorbed by water. So it doesn't penetrate through skin at all. It, all of the laser will be absorbed in the top uh, uh, 10 or 20 microns. Uh, and uh, for, for, for skin, that's the stratum corneum, that's the out, outermost uh, uh, skin layer, which is basically just uh, 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 layers of uh, dead, flattened uh, 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 cells. If we use a visible laser, like for example, 400 uh, nan uh, nanometer to 500 or 600 nanometers, this uh, range of the, the light Will, will go through the skin, the, the, the epidermis, because epidermis is almost transparent to these wavelengths. And then this will be absorbed by the, uh, uh, the melanin and the hemoglobin. And then that heat needs to travel to the surface before the infrared detectors can, can see it. So in this case, we'll have a delayed, we call it a delayed thermal wave. So from the latest thermal wave, we can study the concentration and the distribution of the, of the skin melanin and the, and the hemoglobin, for example. And uh, uh, this is a typical uh, outer signal uh, when we use an urban yak laser. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard decay uh, signal. So before the laser comes, it's, uh, it's just background, and when the laser comes, the signal jumped because it absorbed the, uh, the laser energy, and when the laser is gone, it will gradually relax back to its uh, previous uh, normal value. And uh, it's interesting, uh, it's the shape. By analyzing this shape, we can understand the, 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 the optical and the thermal properties of the, of the skin, and when we study <coughs> this shape, we find that uh, the early part of a signal reflects more of the skin surface, and the later signal reflects more deeper into the skin. So if we can slice the, 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 the signal, we analyze them separately, we can, we can see into the sample. So this is uh, uh, what, uh, what the uh, result looks like. So on the left-hand side are the typical auto signals, the typically decay signals, and on the right-hand side are the analyzed result. So we can, we can see about 10, uh, 12 micrometers into the skin. That's, that's well within the stratum corneum. And uh, there's a very few, and we, we can have a, a micrometer uh, spatial resolution. And uh, there's a, there are very little techniques that can, can, uh, can resolve at this uh, level. And you can see uh, the on the top is the forehead, and then is arm, and the face, hand, finger, 
and the nail and the hair. So you can see at the different uh, skin side, the different part of the body, uh, the vertical uh, axis is the water content, the, the water uh, uh, in the skin. And you can see the water content is different at the different skin side. And the, the, the nail and the hair has the lowest water content. And it's interesting to see that uh, the hair has a curved structure. Yeah, we think this is uh, probably due to the, uh, the, the hair's uh, uh, cylindrical uh, structure. That so they, they have multiple layers, and the probably different layers uh, have a different water absorption ability. So uh, that's the, the hair. And uh, then we can, ah, this is a hair uh, measurement as well. So uh, if we can measure the hair, then we can measure the, the hair product, for example, shampoo, etc. cetera. So uh, this, is, uh, 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 this is not a shampoo. This is a soaking measurement. So this is normal hair. And uh, this orange hair is the, uh, the hair after soaking. So after you soak the hair in water, for example, 10 minutes, uh, it will absorb a lot of water. And, uh, and you can see the, the water content has increased. And then if you left the hair in the uh, ambient environment, it will dry and it will go gradually go back to its normal, normal level. And uh, it will gradually go back, go back, go back. You can see even after 55 minutes, it's still not to its original uh, level. And uh, this is uh, uh, another uh, study we did on nail. So we, 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 want, to, uh, we want to see the, uh, the differences of the water content and the water loss on nails. So uh, this uh, uh, infrared measurement allows us to do the, uh, the measurement on the nails. So this is the left hand. And this is the right hand, and you can see this side is the, the water content. So, so the sorry, the blue one, the blue one are the water content. So you can see of uh, all the five nails, they are uh, they are they are slightly different uh, at the uh, at the uh, different uh, uh, different fingers. Sorry, this is uh, sorry, this is the left hand. This is the right hand, and you can see the, the, the baby small has the highest water content on the right hand side, and the, the, the pink is the, uh, uh, the gradient, so the how much of the, uh, the slope. And uh, again, uh, you can see the differences, and on the right hand side are the, uh, are the, uh, are the diffusion coefficient, and, uh, and, uh, uh, the, the nail water loss. So with this, uh, uh, on the nail side, uh, we can use the aqua flux to measure the water loss from the nail using a special uh, ad adapter. And uh, it's interesting to see that uh, this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side, the, the pink one are the water loss. And as you can see, Different nails, they have a different water loss. So the, the sum <coughs> has the lowest water loss, and the baby small have the, the highest water loss. And so when you if you if you do the standard diffusion uh, calculation, if you know the gradient, you know the, the, the flux, then you can work out the diffusion coefficient, or the water diffusion coefficient. So we can work out the uh, the diffusion diffusivity or diffusion coefficient of the nails. So that's uh, over there and you can see different nails also have a different uh, uh, diffusion coefficient and uh, what we can do is we can also measure the same nail plate but at different spots so this is the, the the hydration as you can see the tip of the nail has uh, less water and uh, and uh, uh, the nail that close to the skin that has higher water water loss a uh, water water level and on the side also have less Water than the, in the middle, and the, for the for the water loss, it's also not uh, not uniform, and you can see it has a, uh, a trend. It's a low water loss at the edge and a higher water loss at the at the at the back. And uh, 
this uh, uh, photothermal measurement uh, uh, is heavily uh, depends on the 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 wavelengths depends on which laser you're using. That's excitation wavelengths, and also depends on the detection wavelengths. Uh, so we use the interference filter to 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 to. Uh, we can use the interference filter to choose which wavelengths to to measure. So, for example, we can measure at uh, uh, around six microns, uh, seven microns, eight microns, nine microns, uh, ten microns, uh, twelve microns, and uh, thirteen microns. And you can see the signal is uh, completely different because uh, the the radiation is uh, different, and also the the optical absorbance is uh, different. And by analyzing these. Uh, uh, signals at a different wavelengths, we can equivalent of getting a spectroscopy, spectra uh, of, the, of, the, of the sample. And from the sample, uh, this is spectrum data, so we compared with the, this blue one is the water spectrum at this uh, 5 to uh, 13 micrometer uh, wavelengths. And uh, we, can, we can clearly differentiate uh, uh, different uh, uh, different materials, different skins, at, uh, by using this uh, uh, spectrum information, and uh, that uh, that uh, bring brings a very interesting uh, application for this uh, this author, because it's non-contact, it's non-invasive, and it's a spectroscopic uh, in nature. So it's possible uh, to to develop a handheld device in the future uh, that can measure the, for example, chemicals uh, without touching it. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's a technique that can work on any sam sample surfaces. So you don't need to prepare the sample. You can just, uh, just uh, measure it at, a, uh, uh, at the uh, surface and using this uh, point and the shoot. Uh, fashion and uh, uh, this mid infrared is insensitive to the color and the uh, and the small movement of the sample. Okay, so apart from the research, I'm also doing quite a lot of teaching, and as a byproduct of uh, the teaching, I've uh, I've uh, published several books. So the uh, first book is about embedded systems uh, and the Internet of Things, and it's based on the ARM embed uh, micro microcontroller. And uh, uh, ah, we they even have a, a Chinese version published by the uh, uh, the Tsinghua University. And this is the uh, the book about the uh, the uh, photothermal radiometry, and uh, uh, and uh, you can see uh, uh, several interesting images. So this is me <laughs> from the back. At that time, I have a lot of back pain. So I asked my wife uh, to took a, a picture of my back. And you can see on the um, left, uh, right hand side of the back, it's much more darker. So the temperature is, uh, is lower. So by, by, by analyzing the temperature, you, you could see some of the, uh, uh, the pains of the, of the, of the body. And then this, uh, this is uh, the book about uh, Java, and uh, it's a focus on the Internet of Things, uh, AI, and the, and the blockchain. And this is the latest one. It's coming out uh, uh, in May. And uh, it's about uh, artificial intelligence programming with Python. So this book gave you a, a panorama view. Of the of the AI. So assuming you know nothing about it and uh, have no pr previous experience of Python, and uh, so that's why it's called uh, uh, from zero to hero. <laughs> so highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what happens next? Apart from the uh, the the research I've been talking about, uh, there's a few other things could be very interesting uh, in the future. Uh, I've been spending my life doing mid-infrared measurement, but uh, there are also something very interesting in the near-infrared. Near-infrared is a region between 9 uh, nanometers to uh, 1,700 nanometers. The beauty of this wavelength, for example, this uh, IRA, so uh, 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 not Irish uh, Republic, I mean, uh, is infrared band A, 
Uh, you, can, you can see this region can go right deep into the skin, into the, um, into the blood vessels. So you can use this, uh, this uh, mid near infrared to do a lot of uh, interesting measurement. So, what, so we, we did a little bit of uh, development work. That's the um, uh, uh, Texas Instruments uh, 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 near infrared spectrometer. And uh, we wrote the MATLAB software to work with it. And uh, this is one of example uh, of the spectrum of the different skin sides. And uh, we repeat each skin side five times and put them together. You will see, wow, it's uh, very difficult to see what's the correlation between them. Then you can analyze this uh, spectrum using this uh, dimension reduction uh, techniques, such as a linear discriminant analysis. Uh, or this uh, principal component analysis, for example, that, uh, that is equivalent of uh, viewing the same data from a different angle. Yeah. You project the data from one space to another space, and you can see it can largely separate the, the, the spectrum from different skin sites quite nicely. So you can, you can do classification using this one. Yeah. For example, the normal skin, the dry skin, the healthy skin, and diseased skin, and probably different type of skin disease yeah, uh, with, this, uh, te with this technique. And uh, this is another interesting result. So this is the near-infrared spectrum of the, uh, at a different blood, co uh, blood glucose levels. So this is blood glucose levels. This is uh, uh, the wavelengths, and this is spectrum. And uh, you look at it and see, wow, it's uh, very difficult to see what's the relationship between the spectrum and the blood glucose levels. Then, if you randomly divide uh, this uh, spectrum into two groups, uh, the, the training set and test set, and then you tr use a training set to train some of the machine learning algorithms, for example, like these uh, gradient boosting regression algorithms. And then you use the trained model to work on the test data. That, uh, he hasn't seen it before. And then you can, you can see how, how it looks like. So the blue one are the training data. So training ob obviously went very well. They're highly linear. This is a, this is a real glucose level, and this is a blue, uh, predicted glucose level. But uh, the interesting part is this orange dot. They are the test data. So this data, the, the, the algorithm haven't seen it before. If it, it can still correctly predict it, that means uh, this algorithm can correctly predict uh, 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 any spectrum. And uh, we run this continuously, randomly. So we keep on random uh, separated the samples and keep on. And the, the re result has been a very, very consistent. So if this is true, we could possibly have a potential uh, non-invasive blood glucose measurement technique. So no more printing fingers. Uh, another thing, while we are doing this um, uh, epsilon measurement, we did quite a lot of uh, uh, mathematical modeling for the, for the, for the technique. So, so this is, uh, the, the for example, the, 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 the positive uh, metal plate, and this is negative metal plate, and this is the electric field. You can see going from positive to negative. And, uh, if you move these uh, two plates further apart, the electric field goes higher. Yeah? And this time, for example, you only measure the near surface, and this one you can measure much deeper. So by varying the, uh, the, the position and the size of this, uh, this electrode, in principle, we can see into the sample. And if you place these, uh, these, uh, these uh, plate in a 3D dimension, in theory, you could have a 3D biomedical material imaging technique. It's like an X-ray, a portable, low-cost X-ray technique. And uh, I think this is potentially pa uh, patentable. And uh, finally, I want to finish my, my talk with a few words from the analytics of uh, Confucius. So, so if you know Confucius, he's uh, one of the greatest educators in, uh, in the Chinese history. 
uh, he lived about uh, 2,500 years ago, and uh, and the people uh, often say that uh, if you read half of the analytics of Confucius, you can rule the world. Uh, that's not true because I have read all of it, <laughs> and I haven't ruled the world yet. Uh, yeah, there's a few, yeah, just, uh, uh, just out of interest, uh, there's a few words. The first one is the first sentence of first chapter of the book. It says, uh, in Chinese, it says, 学而学习之不亦乐乎. If you translate that into English, it means uh, study and, uh, sorry, learn and uh, uh, practice from time to time. Isn't it uh, enjoyable? So in Chinese, study is a two activity learn and practice. So a lot of students uh, didn't get uh, the joy of learn, of study. It's because they probably missed the second part, the, the practice. Yeah. So the practice is the part that brings the joy of learning. If you just learn it for the sake of learning it, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you learn it, then you find you can use it uh, somehow to solve real life problem. Then it's much more fun and it's much more effective. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite. Uh, in Chinese, it says, Ji ji zhe bu ru hao ji zhe. Hao ji zhe bu ru le ji zhe. So uh, if it's something you know it, it's not good at, you love it. And if you love it, not as good as you enjoy it. So that's the key of uh, almost anything in the world. If you want to do it well, if you want it last long, the key is to enjoy it. When you enjoy it, you love it. And when you love it, you will know it. So thank you very much. To, to full professor. I, I really liked his, his, his lecture. It's good to see the motivation <laughs> of fried Mars bars and iron <laughs> brew motivated you to think about healthcare uh, and skin, skin health. Uh, so it was good to see that uh, certainly at the, at the start. But I think it was great to see, um, obviously for this progression to full professor, we want to see this, this impact that, that Perry has made. And I think we see the, the impact in two areas. Um, and I think the first was obviously in the research and enterprise, in taking, uh, if you like, a research problem and progressing it to an impact that's clearly you know, a spin-out company and its economic impact. And I think that's really the holy grail of, of, of what governments would like to see an impact. And we increasingly see this in, in, in many uh, industrialized nations, the push to gain that economic impact from what is fundamentally uh, basic research. And I think that's so tough to do. And it's to, to Perry's credit that he was able to take us through that, that journey. And I think the other aspect of your impact, which we saw at the start of the journey, um, and I felt we really got your, your personal insight <laughs> in how you conducted yourself and how you interacted with others around you. Is it was great to see that interaction uh, with a project student, and we saw that, and then you spoke about your impact in upskilling our students through uh, book, book contributions. And I think that was another aspect of your contribution that's also quite difficult to translate the needs in research more widely into our student body. So, so I really enjoyed, I enjoyed that aspect as well. And of course it's not stopping. And I, and I, I really like the idea of what the future holds because I think 
uh, the title of, of, of professor should not be an end. And I think it was great that you were thinking about what your future contribution should be and that beauty and enjoyment of learning and the progression of learning because the title of professor, of course, should not halt and say, I've reached the pinnacle, so I should stop here. So I, I really enjoyed that as well. So, so now we go to, so the tradition of inaugural lectures is not to ask questions. I know you wanted questions <laughs> to be asked, but, but I think that the tradition is not to do that. But we have a new tradition, I believe, instigated by the, the provost. We have a new tradition where we have a memento to celebrate uh, your progression to full professor. So if I could invite you up to the front, Perry, and I will grab this memento. God, I hope I don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a lot of trip, trip hazards here. So if I could ask Perry, yeah, if yep. we could, and I think we've got a photographer to come along. And so this is a new tradition that we're instigating. <laughs> and I think just before I, I, I call the lecture to a close, um, obviously this is a milestone because you know we've been through lockdown. I think our interactions have been limited, but it's great to have this series back uh, up in, in full swing. Um, I think it's a good time as well to thank the organisers and people like Neil, uh, who has put this programme together. Um, and it's also, I'm very grateful for the people to come along here to make this, this first kickoff inaugural event uh, a, a success. So I'd like to thank you all, and if you want to speak to Perry, if you do have any questions, <laughs> Perry will be uh, sort of, yeah, he'll be around. And also, I'd invite you to stay uh, after this, this close, and I think we've got refreshments in the room next door. So I'd like to call this lecture to a close. Thank you all for your attendance. Thank you.